Hi, I'm Mike, and welcome back to the daily vlogs here on Our Wyoming Life, where today we are going to get a start on installing the brand new AeroQuip cattle handling system. We're gonna see how far we can get done with that today. We're also gonna go down and take a look at some of the animals that this whole thing will benefit. It's all coming up today on Our Wyoming Life. <laughs> So that's right, it's the return of the vlog. Uh, we're bringing back the vlog. We did our 30 days, 30 vlogs. People loved it. We're bringing it back. We're doing it five days a week and Monday through Friday and you'll be able to catch us every day of the week uh, here on YouTube and on our sister channel, uh, Beyond the Ranch, where you can uh, get our live streams and all kinds of good stuff. So. Today, uh, we, we basically have been working on this corral system for about a week now. We've been tearing out the old corrals, uh, which is, was a really long process. And then I actually had one of our neighbors, Gary, he came up with his, uh, his blade and worked through the entire area, leveling it out, getting all this, the crap off the top and making sure that it was nice and smooth for us when we come in with the brand new AeroQuip system. That is done, as you can see. And now it's time to start placing components. So like I said, we've been cleaning this area out, getting all the materials moved off, get it graded, get it down to grade, get it smoothed out, do all that good stuff, all in preparation for today, which is the day that we get to move some of the equipment in. I'm not really sure how long this is gonna take. Uh, I'm kind of playing this by ear, but I've talked to the guys at AeroQuip. They actually told me that I should start with the loading chute uh, is where I should start my assembly. Uh, I'm gonna kind of go against their directions because I can't quite figure out where exactly it would sit. It would sit somewhere over in this area, but it's a lot easier to measure and figure out where the squeeze chute is gonna be. So that's where we're gonna start. We're gonna move the squeeze chute in. First though, we have a tradition that we do every year and we'd usually do it in the fall. And uh, that's when we blow up my summer hat. First, we have to get to that summer hat. And I don't think I've ever shown when I actually switch my hats. And usually I do it right around the 1st of June. So that works for today. I am gonna actually switch out from this hat uh, which is a felt uh, Stetson Skyline hat to a uh, straw hat. And that just, uh, these things get hot in the summertime is the main reason. The straw hat is gonna be a little bit cooler and uh, it, you know, shake things up every once in a while. I don't like being stuck with the same thing over and over again. So let me grab the new hat. So this is my new hat. Hopefully it stays on my head out here in this little bit of a breeze that we've got going on. This hat, for the first time ever, we actually have given away this hat. I'm gonna get it cleaned, I'm gonna get it reshaped a little bit, and then it will be sent off to Trinity, who won the hat during one of our live streams on Sunday night, which happened on the Beyond the Ranch channel. You can go subscribe to that. You can meet us every Sunday night where we get a chance to sit down and talk about what's going on, uh, not only on the ranch, but off the ranch, and a little bit more informal and, and kind of kind of kick it with you guys just a little bit. So the time has come, we switch hats. It is now officially summer on the ranch. You know, we may be a few weeks early, but uh, I'll take it. This hat will go directly to Trinity. I'll pick that up and get it clean for you, Trinity. Thank you very much uh, for uh, being a subscriber to Our Wyoming Life, and thank you for being a subscriber to Beyond the Ranch as well. So our next step here is that we are gonna go grab a tractor, we're gonna put some forks on it, and we are gonna pick up the AeroQuip squeeze chute. We're gonna get it put in place. I do have uh, it roughly measured out where it's gonna go, so I can actually put a pin in, a pin flag is what this is called. It's right over here by the hat. And we are going to place this right here, exactly where the chute is gonna sit. This is one of gonna be the corner of the chute. So that's it, we're gonna run over here, we're gonna grab this chute, we're gonna grab that tractor, we're gonna put forks on it, we're gonna get everything moved into place, and that chute is gonna be uh, where we begin building our corral from, hopefully. Awesome. 
So this is the tractor that's gonna be doing the most of the work for us today, uh, our 6420. Uh, first thing we have to do is go and drop off the bucket. We're not gonna need that. Uh, we are actually gonna be using forks for most of this, I hope. And uh, so we're gonna go hook up to our forks, get those on here and grab that chute. So I guess one of the uh, biggest concerns uh, that people have have voiced to us is the fact that we removed our entire corral system. Um, you know, why couldn't we have set up the AeroQuip somewhere else, left ours in place in case something happens with that relationship with AeroQuip? Obviously, the system still belongs to them. Um, they're just letting us test it, but we're kind of, I don't know, we're kind of all in type folks, I guess. And uh, this is going to be a partnership that will continue for years and years and years. What the hope is, is that, you know, when AeroQuip comes out with something new that we'll be able to use it here on the ranch and be able to showcase it for you guys. And that's what we're hoping. And uh, that's what uh, AeroQuip is hoping. So uh, by us removing our entire corral system and putting theirs in is basically showing uh, a faith for, uh, you know, in, in the relationship for both of us. And I think that, uh, I think that it's gonna pay off in the long run. Let's get these, uh, get this bucket off of here and we'll get our forks put on and uh, we'll start putting her together. Taking off the bucket on the tractor really isn't that hard. It's just a matter of a couple pins that get pulled out. And then we can just drop this thing off and we'll leave it sitting here. The forks go on pretty much the same way. We just get ourselves lined up with them. That's pretty close, but I'm like six inches off. So we're gonna drag it back just a little bit and then uh, hopefully get her a little better. All right, that's close enough for government work. Um, we, we're gonna have to wiggle this thing around a little bit anyway, so I think that'll work. We're gonna leave this here and we're gonna start working on alleys, uh, which will lead in to the squeeze chute. I'll show you how they work. That's pretty cool. The first, uh, the first piece of the new corral system is in place and hopefully pretty close to where it's gonna go. We're gonna drive across the yard here uh, to where I've been storing all the AeroQuip stuff and I'm gonna show you how these alleys work and, uh, and what we have to do to get them in place. Okay, so this is our first alley. This one is actually assembled already for us, which was, which was very nice. Um, so basically what this is gonna, this is gonna go right behind the squeeze chute. And with these uh, adjustable sides, you can basically make it as narrow or as wide as you want to. So there you go. I'm a cow. That doesn't feel too uncomfortable. Could be worse.
Next up, we jump back in the tractor and we're gonna move this thing over there behind the squeeze chute. So this will be our first alley. Uh, we've got a bunch more that actually have to be built. This one was already put together for us, which is really nice, um, but I have to find the hardware and then get everything put together. I'm not quite sure where I'm gonna do that, but we'll figure it out. Getting thousands of pounds of equipment to just line up isn't the easiest thing in the world. I still don't have it lined up completely right, but we're a lot closer than we were just a few minutes ago. I think if I let this down, I think it'll line right up. We're getting somewhere. We've got the alley bolted to the chute. The chute is in place. And everything seems to be working okay. So before we get going building more of these alleys, because we're gonna have to kind of work our way around here, um, we are going to go to the next step, which is to apply, or apply, to install <laughs> another one of these rolling gates at the back of this alley. And what that'll do is keep, cow, uh, if we put a cow or whatever into this little area, it'll keep them there. They'll be like waiting in line. So that's our plan. We'll bolt another rolling gate right here. And this is the rolling gate. This will be the next thing we put in right at the end of this alley. So I gotta go find more bolts. And if you haven't gotten yourself a set of ratcheting wrenches yet, get them. It took me years to buy a set of these. I didn't really see the point in them, but now uh, I don't think I'd want to live without them. They work great. They'll still bust your knuckles though. All right, here's the score up till now. We've got a chute, a rolling gate, an alley, and another rolling gate. We're up to four pieces completed in our new cattle handling facility from AeroQuip, whatever you want to call it. Four out of a lot. We're gonna take a couple minutes here and uh, run out and just take a look at the herd. The interesting thing about uh, all of this and you know the, the arrow clip system and replacing the corrals and everything we do uh, that has to do with cattle handling equipment is really here for the benefit of the cows. Uh, there is a safety factor for us as well but a lot of it just comes down to uh, you know, making sure that the cows are safe when they move through systems, that we make sure that, you know, we face bolts the correct direction so that there's no way they can catch. Carriage bolts, of course, have a rounded end. That's what we're using uh, through most of this system. So little things like that, that, are, that, you know, really can be appreciated by somebody who works cattle and knows, you know, if you have a bolt or a, a screw or anything else that works its way loose, that's a, that's a catch point for a cow. So that I appreciate about AeroQuip, that they do use carriage bolts all the way through the entire thing, uh, that they're all faced the right direction, which is something that's easy to overlook. Um, but, you know, it's all about the, the, uh, the flow of the system, and I really can't wait until 
we're completely done until we're able to take a look back and see uh, what we end up with. done we can get back to building our corrals and like I said our next step is going to be working on building these alleys uh, that come disassembled we're basically building them uh, piece by piece so let's get started on that these are the pieces of the alleys we have two ends for each alley we have a center beam and then we have our sides which I haven't brought over yet we also have what are called kicker panels, and these go on the back side so that you can get a curve to your alley. It'll make a little bit more sense once we get to building something, so let's get to it. We're gonna get started here by putting another end piece on and uh, attaching that with the kicker panel so that it'll turn at an angle and come off a little bit, giving the cows a round to work around. Okay, now we got the kicker plate put in. It's not uh, secured yet, it's not tightened down uh, because we may have to wiggle a little bit to make things work. But next up is our end plate of the alley. We're actually gonna try to build this in place and see how this works. If it doesn't work, uh, then we'll probably have to go and build them in the shop where we're on a nice level surface and then bring them out to install them. But hopefully I can build them in place and work our way around. We'll see. And then on the front side of this goes this clip, which will hold, if I put it on the right way. Which will hold everything together, fancy pantsy. Now, we are gonna go ahead and bolt on a portion of our top brace which is gonna go across this way. And then support it somehow. I don't know. How tall are these? These are too tall. Okay. I'm gonna come up with something to support these. I got an idea. Be right back. Okay. Come on. Okay, flippity floppity to the other side of the. All right, we've got this all loosely put together. Now we need to go grab our side doors, get those put on here, which will tie everything together, I'm hoping. And then, um, we can go through and tighten everything up. So next up is a door on the side.
Okay, there's probably a method to this or a way to do this. It's a lot easier, but uh, we're gonna figure it out. These pins that slide in and out go into these holes. There's one on each side. Seems relatively straightforward. We'll start off with our first pin here. Well, that was easy. Okay. There we go. We should be able to pick this up, lock this side in place, the side of the alley. <clears throat> ah, crap. There we go. All right, so here's, here's my thought. Everything's wonky because our ground isn't exactly level everywhere. So I have two choices. I need to dig out underneath here to get this to come down a little bit um, so that it's more level because I think we're on a slight uphill going here. We didn't really break out like laser levels and all that kind of stuff to do this ground. I, I honestly didn't think it would be necessary, but um, if I want everything to lock together correctly, we're gonna have to be pretty dang level. So let's uh, break out the shovel. We're gonna dig underneath this one a little bit. Okay, now we're pinned, no we're not. Dang it, I'm gonna go grab the other side. We're gonna put that in see if that helps at all tighten some things down dig another hole do something to try to get this to sit level So we got this one put together. I'm thinking I'm gonna build the rest of them in the shop. It'll just be a lot easier. Not, I don't know if it'll be easier, but at least I won't be digging and stuff like that. Cause then I can build them, come in here, level this out a little bit and then drop them into place. So we're gonna tighten up all the bolts on this one. And then we're gonna try to move all of these parts for the rest, uh, the other six of these into the shop and put them together in there. So let's bolt this one down. So there we go, one more alley done, and uh, we're gonna kind of shift gears here a little bit and go build in the shop for a little bit, get the rest of the alleys put together so that we can move them out. Also gonna do a little bit of dirt work, and uh, hopefully that'll get us all set. Wish me luck. In the factory or oh, the shipyard At construction you are employed The weekend's here, now you're overjoyed With thoughts of a boisterous Saturday night It's the boys' night to howl And the girls' night to prowl It's the blue-collar workers' boisterous Saturday night A chance to let off steam a chance to holler and scream It's a blue-collar worker's Boisterous Saturday night All week long you've been longing for That whistle to blow, get out that door A quick shower, and a fast meal Rev up the car and make her wheels squeal Heading for a boisterous Saturday night it's the boys not to have and the girls not to proud. It's the blue collar workers, boisterous Saturday night. 
A chance to let off steam A chance to holler and scream It's a blue-collar worker's Boisterous Saturday night Sing and dance If you get lucky You'll find romance you Drink too much of that I'm sure Wake next morning With your head so sore All called by A boisterous Saturday night It's the boys Not the how And the girls Not the proud It's the blue collar workers Boisterous Saturday night A chance to let off steam a chance to holler and scream It's blue-collar workers Boisterous Saturday night It's the boys not to howl And the girls not to prowl It's blue-collar workers Boisterous Saturday night A chance to let off steam A chance to holler and scream It's blue-collar workers Boisterous Saturday night Lord, it's blue-collar workers Boisterous Saturday night So now we have our alley done uh, with our easy flow chutes heading up to our squeeze chute. Next up is we're going to put a thing here that's called a two-way uh, sorting alley, which will allow cattle to go up towards the loading chute, which actually we use to put them on a truck, or this way. So it's basically going to be used to, to uh, sort animal from going or sort animals go in two different directions. Should be a pretty easy thing to install. We'll go grab it. We'll put it in. And this is where uh, we get into something that I've actually been waiting to get into, and this is where we can start pinning things together. Up until now, we've been bolting everything uh, to keep it as rigid, rigid as possible because cows are gonna be pushing on these alleys pretty hard. But right here, uh, we, we have a little bit of bolting to do on the inside of this. So what I'm gonna do is use these pin system to start connecting things here. This will allow for a little bit of elevation difference too because we do have a slight slope here. So that'll take care of that and solve that problem. So we're gonna pin this stuff together and then assemble the rest of this, uh, this two-way chute. Got them in Wyoming, Montana's got its best Seen them here in other places, out here in the west Roping cows and branding calves, riding buck and bronze It's a real joy to see a real cowboy, or even in the honky tongs Whoopie tie, old cowboy, riding the range Whoopie tie, old cowboy I hope that you don't change Cowboy breed is fading It's nearly gone for good Urban nights and drugstores And the ones from Hollywood 
If they really knew the way it was, they truly changed their ways. Cause there ain't no stopping a real cowboy, but just like the good old days. Whoopie tie, oh cowboy. No roof for fame. Whoopie tie, oh cowboy. Nobody knows your name. That a real cowboy is the real McCoy And we all think he's grand Rest of you I've spoken of Don't even try To see you try to be something you ain't But it just makes me cry Whoopie tie, oh cowboy Riding the range Whoopie tie, oh cowboy Nobody knows your Whoopie tie, oh cowboy, riding the range. Whoopie tie, oh cowboy, you're trying your last day. And just like that, we're almost done. The, uh, we've got a little bit of weather moving in on us. Not a bad day to, not a bad way to end the day. If you get a little bit of rain, that would be fine with me. And we have one more piece left to install here. And that is our loading chute. I don't think we're gonna get to our tub today. We'll do it another day, not a big deal. We have to have this done by branding, which is middle of June or so. So I think we've got plenty of time to get her done. We'll get this installed and uh, we'll call it a day. But thank you for hanging out with me once again as we continue. Well, we start over our vlogs uh, five days a week right here on YouTube. Our weekly vlog. I haven't come up with a catchy name for it yet, but maybe someday. Uh, we have a lot more on the way for you um, tomorrow. We actually have uh, some special guests coming in from Beckert. Uh, they are a wire company. They manufacture wire and they will be here with us on the ranch showing us some pretty cool techniques for fencing, uh, barbed wire fencing. Hopefully we can get into that tomorrow. Uh, we will see. Uh, we have plans to actually rework about 600 feet of fence here on the ranch and and uh, I don't know if we'll get started on it tomorrow but they will be here tomorrow where we can get started hopefully uh, we're gonna get this loading chute set in place and that's it for us for today but well, thank you once again be sure to subscribe and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life man I'm tired it's been a long day I'll tell you what